Hi, welcome back. So today, oh, you don't like the welcome back. Is it, that's what <laughs> well, it I is? did it last time, so I can't say anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> welcome back. Um, all right. Today, how to cut calories without tracking. Um, I personally, not a fan of tracking. I do it about for a week, about three to four times a year. Other than that, I don't really track my food, mainly because I eat very similar meals every single day. And then on the weekends, it's pretty similar. Like we love our pizza Saturdays. It's usually some type of meal out on uh, Sundays. So whether it's brunch or a dinner, but for the most part, our weeks are relatively the same. So it doesn't make sense for me to really track every single day because there's so many mm -hmm. similarities in my eating choices. And with that, um, I try to track that full week to make sure it's around the calories that I want to consume. The macros are kind of where I want them to be. Other than that, I just, I'm a man of routine. <laughs> I am also not a fan of tracking, but like you said, I like to check in every once in a while and track and just make sure I'm hitting my protein targets and making sure my calories are where they should be. But also it really is a helpful tool mm -hmm. um, and, and a lot of people need to go through a period of tracking and maybe it's one month, maybe it's four to six months in order just to kind of get their head around how much they're actually eating. But having said that, if tracking is trigger triggering for you, then just don't track. There are mm -hmm. other ways to manage your calories and that's what we're here to talk about today. Yeah. So the first one is just avoid heavily processed foods. And it's a lot of these heavily processed foods are very calorie dense and you're just not getting a, a big quantity of them. So as I ingest more heavily processed foods, I'm ingesting just more food in general. Yeah. And also heavily processed foods are literally engineered scientifically. So you will want to eat more of them. Mm -hmm. So they're going to increase your cravings and then you're going to want to, you're going to end up eating more of them. And then your calories are going to kind of going through the roof. So just by eliminating processed foods or significantly reducing the amount of processed foods that you eat, you can reduce your calories significantly. And yeah. if you're someone who's been eating processed foods for a while, that could make a huge impact alone right there. Yeah, it reminds me of that um, marketing campaign, but I think it was Lay's potato chips where I bet you can't eat just one. <laughs> and now that we know there was so much science put into how to engineer the chip to be almost irresistible, mm -hmm. you start thinking like, you jerks, like, <laughs> like I wanted to eat just one. <laughs> Have you ever, I used to eat Doritos and I, the first couple, I'd, wow, like these are really good. And then four, I'd go, wow, these are actually getting really gross. And the next thing I know, I've eaten like so many chips. I'm like, I don't know. I couldn't even, I couldn't stop. They started good and then they got gross, but I just, I just kept eating them. Yeah. This because they're literally engineered for you to eat more. Yeah, and there's so many times too where the heavily processed food is in conjunction with really a mindless activity, whether it's I'm at work or I'm talking with a friend um, or watching TV. So like watching TV, I'm just grabbing handfuls of popcorn. I'm out to dinner. I had dinner with my family or obviously you're my family. I, <laughs> I had dinner with my mom and dad last night. We had uh, Mexican food and I could not stop eating the chips. And it was just because I was talking, I was having a good time, but it was just a lot of this mindless activity. And during that mindless activity, the heavily processed foods mm -hmm. are there. So trying to figure out a way to limit that could be not having any of the, the food around, that is one thing, but I, I do still like mm -hmm. having a couple chips and salsa during a meal. So maybe it's just grabbing a handful, putting them on my plate, and then that's what all that I need for that time. Or maybe it's just saying, if I want this food, I need to go out and pick it up yeah. at that time. Mm -hmm. So there's so many, so many different ways you can approach it. Mm -hmm. The next one here is eat enough protein. And the main reason why this is such a good one to have in the cut calories without tracking is protein satiating and protein is going to help fuel your muscles in terms of gain more muscle mass. The more muscle mass you have, the more you're burning calories just all day. So I'm burning more calories just by eating a little bit more protein. Granted, you need to work out too um, to get that more <laughs> muscle mass, but you're, I'm assuming you're already working out. You're already doing these other things by adding a little bit more protein. You're probably not 
eating something else. Mm -hmm. And you said it, I like this one because protein is the most satiating macronutrient. So if you're making a point to fill up on protein, maybe it's even reaching for your protein first before you fill up on the other macros, you're more likely to feel fuller, faster, and less likely to eat as many calories as you would have. Yeah, and I like the way you say eat the um, protein first because that can go into slowing down a little bit to let your body digest some and then give those signals that you may be full. Mm -hmm. And when it does give those signals that you may be full and then you stop eating, the most important macronutrient, the protein, is already in your stomach and already being digested where if you save that for last and you're so full that you don't want to eat anymore, <laughs> then that most important macronutrient you didn't get enough of. And chances are you'll burn through those other macros and you'll be hungrier sooner and you'll end up reaching for something. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, the next thing we have is drink enough water. And it's hard to say like, what is the perfect amount of water for everybody? And I know there's a lot of confusion around what counts as water. Like does coffee count into my water intake? Does alcohol count into my water intake? And I'll be the first one to say, I don't think anyone has that magic answer, but coffee can count towards your water intake. Granted, if you're drinking too much coffee, <laughs> then that's another problem we'd want to deal with. Um, my rule of thumb for most people is take your body weight, cut it by two. That's how many ounces of water I'd like to see you consume each day. If you're doing excessive, like, very sweaty style workouts. I know it's getting warmer here. So I'm tending, I tend to sweat a little bit more. I probably add another 20 to 30 ounces to that goal. And when you are hitting that goal consistently, chances are you will feel more satiated in a way and you'll be less likely to overeat. Mm -hmm. So even, yeah, drinking the water just helps calm your stomach to send where it's not sending out those hunger signals mm -hmm. the way it usually would if you just have nothing in there <laughs> yeah um when you're hungry eat more voluminous foods first and this is really directing towards a lot more non-starchy vegetables mm -hmm. so uh, non-starchy vegetables going to be like our salads things like um spinach kales um carrots things that are very colorful and it's a great rule of thumb to try to eat as many colors as you can get each day. And a lot of times those tend to be more voluminous foods. The other thing I really, really like about this tip is that from a perspective, when I look at my plate, I can have a bowl of non-starchy vegetables with some proteins, maybe a little bit of fat and maybe some starchy proteins with heavier fiber in there, like some black beans. And it just looks like a massive meal, <laughs> which helps me feel like I'm getting a bigger, more satiating meal. And you think about it like that volume of food, you were literally putting that in your stomach and that's going to take more time for your body to break down. So it gives you the sensation of feeling fuller, even though it's less calorie dense. Yeah. And that's another thing to, to really factor in is how much time it takes to digest certain foods, which goes back to the first point of heavily processed foods will get digested quicker, which means it takes less energy for you to digest those foods. When it takes less energy, you're burning less calories through that digestive process or what they call the thermic effect of food. So again, choosing a minimally processed foods, hopefully some non-starchy vegetables, it just adds stress to your body, that good stress is then digesting the food, you're burning calories, you're going to burn more calories with a minimally processed food than you would with a heavily processed food. And if you're looking at calories as the indicator of I need fewer calories to lose the weight, that's one way to do it. So there is another point I would like to add to this list, and that is a food journal. So if you are really serious about wanting to uh, reach some sort of aesthetic goals, whether it's losing weight to cut calories, or maybe you need to increase like whatever, you can keep a food journal and you can literally track what you eat for one to two weeks and just write it in a food journal. And that way you know how much you're eating and it's helpful to eat the same foods consistently when you do this. And then you can go, okay, well, I'm eating this much. I can dial back just a little bit on this, or I can cut back just a little bit on this because that little bit of cutting back is going to reduce your calories and help you see some fat loss. Yeah. And, and a way I'd like to add a little bit more to the journal is 
how are you feeling afterwards? Oh, yeah. And it, like, I, I'll eat certain things. I We had a shoot yesterday where I had a huge hoagie. And I mean, at the time, I thought this was going to be a great idea. And I <laughs> felt just so sluggish afterwards. And many times we don't pair the two actions where I have a certain type of meal an hour or two later, I just don't have that that energy, that life that I usually have during the day. That's probably because of a previous action that you took. And many times that's going to be a very calorie dense meal that your body just is struggling to process through or just it's. It just not doesn't feel it's, good. Yeah, it just doesn't feel good. It doesn't give you the energy that you really need. Yeah. So, just putting some perspective of I'm writing down in my food journal. These are the things that I had. I could probably change some things here or there, but this is also how it made me feel throughout the day. Um, could be just a healthy perspective. Mm -hmm. And in saying that, if you're at a certain point in your health journey where you're trying to lose that maybe that last couple percentage points of body fat or those last couple pounds because every pound is going to be slightly harder than the next, mm -hmm. you may need to consider tracking. Yeah. At some point you're going to reach a point, like if you're looking to get shredded, there's just no way to cut back more without tracking. Yeah. But I mean, we're talking at, if you've got 30 pounds to lose, you can do this without tracking. But if it's just like you said, that one to 2% or that five to 10 pound you're trying to lose, you really want to get shredded, you're probably going to have to do some tracking at some point. Yeah. And this where I like to just reference back to this, like levels of leanness and the cost of getting lean, mm -hmm. where those initial pounds should just fly right off just by changing a couple very simple activities. And by fly right off, we mean like, half a pound and one pound a week is actually good progress. <laughs> yes. Yeah. One pound a week is excellent <laughs> progress. And that's can be done by just changing very simple habits. Maybe yes. it's walking um, 5,000 steps every every day. And by the end of the week, you probably are going to lose maybe half a pound to a pound, which is great progress. But to continually do that and to continually make progress, you're going to have to tighten that belt mm -hmm. every single time and granted i would do this month after month and not week after week and these are little habits that are building up over time so you're not making these huge changes or big strides all at once yeah it is very disadvantageous to say i want to be at this body fat percentage and this is what people do who are at that body fat percentage it makes more sense to say this is the next step i will do everything in the next step and then after I master that, I'll go on to the next step. So there is a currency to being lean. And at some point, you're going to have to ask yourself, is it worth paying that what I need to pay in order to continue to being lean? Is it worth the exercise I need to put in and how strict I need to be and how much I need to track in order to continue to see the progress? I'm yeah, there is a quality of life that has to shift. If you're the type of person that says, I want to have my beer after work every day, that's fine. Mm -hmm. You're going to cap yourself on the levels of leanness that you will achieve. And that's fine, but that has to be a part of the overall conversation on where you want to go and the health you want to get to. And on the flip side, if you're someone who wants to be shredded, that's also okay, as long as you're willing to give up those things and it isn't going to affect you mentally, emotionally, and socially, and so forth. Yeah, it all has to be taken into account. Yes. All right. That was a really good one. I like that one. <laughs> Surprisingly. Yeah. All right. So if you have any questions, we should have the link in the, in the show notes. And uh, yeah, let us know if you have anything you want us to talk about. Stay pretty healthy. Stay pretty healthy.